Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the official Miss Jamaica. Well, I was waiting on something Ms. different. I've Ms. been waiting on this for weeks. Miss with a M Z, <laughs> not a M I S S. Y'all get it right, okay? When y'all look it up, is an M Z, all right? Check. Or as we said, M Z. Wow. Yeah. So, so hey, man, we here today. You see, I you see, I put my radio voice back on then. Okay. Hey, man, we here today, man. With my boy One Shot Deals. What's going on, What's man? What's going on, King? Say, man, uh, New York? Of course, east side of Harlem. Man. 10-5. I seen the video. And when yeah. I seen the video, I was just checking out the back scene of some of them. And I seen the real, and I said, oh, that's New York, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm Yeah, my side a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I see, man, I seen a dude riding a bike in New York the other day. And I mean, when I seen this cat, man, he was he willing for a minute. I'm like, dang, man, these boys in New York riding these bikes. Yeah, that's just the culture. Yeah, the culture's different. That, that, that's day to day for them bikers, for real. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. See, I love taking the subways and, and walking. He hates it. I love it. I don't like that shit either. <laughs> I only did that when I had to go see my PO because finding parking is hard in New York. Yeah, you, how do people have cars in New York? Yeah, in the hood you good in the hood, but outside the hood you gotta pay for all type of different parking and all that. Shit I guess because we always stay in Manhattan, so in Manhattan it doesn't make sense you have a car because it takes you forever to get a taxi from here to. Might as well just walk. That's a fact. Yeah, them taxis don't stop for us. <laughs> yeah, man. So what? What? I wasn't coming up in New York. Let's let's go down. Let's mm -hmm. let's go let, let's go back on one shot, man. You know mm -hmm. how we do. Mm -hmm. And Say, where man, exactly so, did you grow up? I grew up on the east side of Harlem, but I got a big ass family, so I grew up on the east side of Harlem, Mount Vernon, the Bronx, Brooklyn, because you know my family big. I'm Italian, Jamaican, and Puerto Rican, so I was found in the east side of Harlem. So they come check me. I was I was raised a little different. So I was raised into the streets, into the hustle. So, like, my perception and my view of the streets was different from the kids I grew up with. So, like, I learned how to hustle from my parents and shit. So I was raised up with so that ambition. So you had ambition. your mom and dad in the household with you? It, I had my grandmother in the household. I had my moms and pops in the streets. In the streets. Yeah. Okay. So that's how they, you said that's how they taught you how to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have siblings with you at the time? I'm the oldest out of six. Out of six. And they all were there. Nah, just me and my sister at that point in life. Did your sister learn to hustle too? Hell yeah, she she learned when I learned. So she was two years younger than me doing what I was doing. Because well, you know how some people be like, well, now nah, you a girl, you don't need to be doing what we doing. Now nah, my mom's ran the situation, so it was never that with me. <laughs> <laughs> Word up! I did that. The, the, man, when I went up to you, man, I went up to New York, man. That's how I, I was hustling. I was selling my clothes, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna go to New York. Every nigga go to New York when they selling clothes. I went over there to Broadway, 28th Street. I'm over there, yeah, nigga, I'm over there, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna come up. Where any nigga getting money, they gonna snatch that shit up. That's right, so. Yeah, any block. So I'm, I'm over there, and I'm like, man, I meet this guy. He say, hey, man, uh, uh, I've been on this block for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what the hell? I could not believe this dude said he was proud been that he'd been right there on this corner for 25 years and he Hustling. ain't trying to move, nigga. Real shit. That's how they get it for real. I mean, <laughs> Did I give it to cool you or what? to a certain extent. Am I'm I right? Here, I... 25 years on the same shit, you bugger. Say, that nigga say he yeah. been there for 25 years and he ain't leaving. Mm -hmm. This my this is where I be, man. Everybody know you could ask such and such up the street. He start just talking. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, my nigga. You but that was my motivation. I'm same niggas. Them same niggas I seen on the corners for 20 years. I'm like, nigga, I ain't going to be on the same block for no 20 years later. You bugger yeah. the fuck out. They do it, don't they? Yeah, they do it, though. I go to the block right now. You got old heads still in my block doing the same shit, drinking honey, cooling, talking war stories and all that. Yeah, same it's same shit. It's love, though. It's all love. Like, you know, to each his own, but it's all love. Do you realize how different the culture in New York is from a lot of places? Yeah, I see it. It's just real fast, but certain individuals from different places catch up to the New York shit too. You understand? Know it's all about who you are. Did you look at everybody else as being weird? Since that's your culture compared to. Nah, I traveled a lot, so I understood it. You understood yeah, it? Yeah, just you gotta adapt to it. Because the last time, whenever we were down there, we were walking in Manhattan. And um, this lady, she walked, you know, everybody walked fast, right? Mm -hmm. She walking, walking, she tripped and fell. 
So I went and helped her up, and she just got up and just kept walking like. <laughs> yeah, like, hope dang. nobody seen that shit. I'm out of here. You're <laughs> I'm like, dang, thank you or some. You know, we trying to give that hospitality, but it's like you're just not used to it. Yeah, they rule in New York. They got they got managed, but they rule. A lot of niggas don't say thank you. Mm-mm. And they'll cuss you out in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. They're real aggressive. Very. <laughs> yeah. let, let me ask you something. So, getting into the music, mm-hmm. how, how, what made you, how did you get into music? When I beat my case in trial 2011, I started the music and also my brand, Rider. Like, you know what I mean? I that's, say that's it's Rider Nation now, but I started as Rider. Then they indicted the, the, the whole block and all that, like four different indictments. And when I came home, I just revamped it to Rider Nation in 2015. 15 when I came home and yeah just just life made me start rapping I thought be my case and try I said fuck that shit I'm gonna go tell a story and niggas was like telling me like niggas wasn't talking the shit I'm talking especially like where I come from everybody was on some whole other shit but like the content and the shit that I be saying like the substance like we really started that shit for that's real. hard that's like hard some whole other shit so you beat the case and now, now you got me thinking what case and yeah tell what? us about that like yeah, my yeah. case I could talk about it because it was exonerated and shit but um basically it was um on the grounds of dominion control of a vehicle but I was on my block and I had a car and shit it, I had two guns in it some coke and some crack and shit but like when I took the case to trial 187 days later because my own lawyer didn't file for a 3030 motion and shit. I love details, so I'm going to take How old were you? Shit. How old were you at this time? For this case, this um case I beat in trial, fuck, I was 23, 22, 23. And was that the first time you got in trouble at that time? No, I, caught, I had a youthful offender in 2005, my first gun charge and shit, but it was a youthful offender. And then did four and a half years of that shit. Caught another case, got five more years probation, and a year later I caught this case I'm okay. talking about right now with the car. Had a white caddy, the veil and shit, but it was two guns, coke and crack in the car. Took it to trial for four days. It was a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and a Monday. Four cops testified against me and the DMV worker and shit. I was they, they offered me three and a half before I took it to trial, but I, I took it to trial. If I would have blew it, it'd have been fifteen or more and shit. And then from that I said, fuck that, cause that courtroom, that trial room feel like a wake. That shit only two rows, plush carpets and all that shit. So I ain't never, I'm gonna never go see that motherfucker room again. And I just started rapping going hard. I never sued the cops and none of that shit because I was still in the streets and all that shit. So I just transitioned from the streets and just put into the music shit for real. But when you think about it, though, and I don't, I, I, you go through these things and you, I don't know if you like me, but back when I got myself in the situation, the thing that I look at is you caught me on this and you didn't get me right. But mm-hmm. I did a lot of other stuff. You could, you, you got, you got to take that. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm good with this. You I take it? this. Real I'm cool shit. with this right here. You know what I'm saying? Because you, mm-hmm. you, you've been given time after time. We, 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 we not out here. I mean, I'm. This is when I was younger. You know, I just, I never did. I couldn't never see getting out out of the streets. That's why I say like certain shit that we go through when you do some shit for a cause. And I, I'm a big believer in that shit. Good energy, bad energy, like. Certain niggas in the streets for selfish reasons, nigga. We certain niggas in the streets to feed their families and shit. So like that was my my whole view of it. And it's like, damn. Like that's why I got this tattoo on my neck, cause I was selling dimes of coke at the time and I paid my lawyer twenty five thousand dollars. And when I beat my case and tried, I said, fuck it, I'm gonna get my neck tattooed and go off this music shit. Woo. But I feel like that was the price I had to pay. Besides the losses a nigga take and shit in the streets, but I'm like, damn, this little punk ass twenty five thousand. This price I gotta pay instead of doing this punk ass time and it took me away from my family and all that shit. So I look like nigga is one way or the other. It's the price I pay and staying solid. Cause sucking niggas take the easy way out, but nigga that commas come right mm-hmm. back around. You dig and niggas get the short end of the stick. So. Just staying solid, I just felt that's why I got the outcomes. I got in a lot of things and shit, you feel me? That's Real dope, shit. man. That's hard. Um, <clears throat> go ahead. So, but, okay, one thing I've always wanted to ask, and um, I don't think I've ever asked this question before, but with you being in the streets and all the content that you have now created to put into your music, do you think um, because you're no longer there in the streets anymore or doing any of that, do you think you can ever run out of content? Hell no. Yeah. I be saying that to our myself. Our personal, our personal, you know, events because you're no longer there doing that stuff anymore. But I did so much of this shit. That's why it depends on your company you keep, especially when I'm creating. I like to be around certain individuals because we'd be chopping it up, and then the shit we talk about just would be, be reminding me of shit, dude. Because mm-hmm. I, I get high, like a lot of shit I do, I just be rolling for real in life. But 
I did a lot of shit, so it's just how you put that shit together for real. It's like, it's even the beats. Like, the certain beats just wake up a whole nother demon sometimes. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. There's a lot of shit. I used to think that way. Like, damn, I ain't doing this shit no more. I can't right. talk that shit. Bugging. I can talk that shit. Niggas ain't do 10% of certain <laughs> shit, dick. So it's like, these niggas be talking some bullshit and glorifying some shit that niggas are living day to day. And like, coming from that shit, that shit, you know, just... Drop a jewel or something. You did talk that shit, that content, but don't mislead the people, though. So you a writer. You like to write. You don't punch in. I love writing, but coming to Atlanta and being around other artists and you shit. starting to punch in. I'm like, oh, shit. Bringing a microphone out the booth and sitting next to the... <laughs> that shit is hard. That shit is... That's, yeah. When I say hard, like dope. Dope. Yeah, yeah, of <laughs> course. Stuff, like, like, damn, and, and you can, it's like writing without writing. You know what I mean? No, no, that's dope, That shit that's dope. So I yeah. like doing both, though. Cause like certain shit when I write, yeah, I go love in. Writing. Yeah, ooh, I love writing. Ooh, yeah, ooh, they yeah. in trouble. Like, That's a fact. New York, yeah. man. Yeah, that type of shit. Yeah, I know it, man. But the formula, I love vibing with it. Dude. So, so how did you feel when Jada Kiss came out the out the box when he went in on uh camera on them on that on that verse? I, I love oh, I, 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 I love music. I told <laughs> niggas off the rip. I said two things you can't compare because they both great in they lanes and they, they both great in their lanes in a wave, but. You can't compare fly the, shit with street shit. That's what you know Jada J- Kiss do this, man. Come on, that's, that's that street shit. That, man, this nigga do this. I already knew that. I, yeah. I post my picture, me and him up quick, nigga. Look, nigga. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I was too. riding with already. You yeah, know. Shout out to Jada for real. <laughs> yeah, I always have been. A, that's one of that's one of the ones that I yeah my favorites mm-hmm. in New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I think about the music, I'm like, that's my guy right there. Yeah, my favorite. He was one of them, but. Dear Max R. P. Though. Oh, I That's seen bro. that, bro. I seen the man. I seen that, that. That man. You can't. I told told Shaw. I said that nigga can't never stop rapping. Mm-hmm. When you get that kind of uh, right hand of fellowship, nigga. Yeah. What? 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 You? You gotta come hard. Yeah, real shit. That's yeah. the bro, man. But but think about it. When you get what you have, nobody got. It. People don't have that respect, bro. So you gotta. You can't. And do you even know what I'm talking about? Sort of, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, see, I, that's what I was saying. Like, that, you can't case stop like right? that, man. It's crazy. A year and a half later, I got indicted in the hood and shit. I came home, and I was offered to open up for DMX in March 16, 2016. And from there was Murder, She Wrote. I was with Dog for like four years, five really? years. Really? Hell yeah. He did the year for the IRS shit, and we did the 20th anniversary tour. I opened up for that nigga in like 100 different cities, 100 different shows, over 100 shows. And it was the the dope shit about it. it was like every show was I had to make niggas believe it because they didn't know who the fuck I was, and that was the dope shit for real. But with that time on the video that I seen where he he, he yeah gives it was lifestyle right, yeah the right hand of fellowship is what I'm calling it. But yeah. at any rate, like you you the one like well, what was that energy like that night? And how long had you known him at the time? Should I know him for a little minute for like two 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 and a half years three years? But. We was already on tour. We was home in New York City. I threw a show, my own show. I had niggas from my hood open up for me and shit. It's a thing I started when I started rapping in 2011, 12 and shit. I used to I always do shows and shit, but this specific show, Dog said he was going to pull up to, whatever. I was cool and I was just stressing and shit. I'm cool. And that nigga popped up the last second and shit, vibed out. But he was always like that and shit. And I did that show. He just, you know, said his opinion on it. Dope, man. That shit was different, different energy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. It hit different when he never seen me perform because on tour, like, you know, he backstage already. Yeah. So when he's actually seen me do my thing, that was different. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. Um, So I know that that was a tough loss when when, when he passed away. Where were you at and what were you doing? I was in Atlanta. We just. We actually just had him in Atlanta like a week and a half ago in my cousin Manny Club, 1145 and shit. He pulled up and just was vibing for real. And he just working on his album. We just went to the studio with Benny the Butcher. He just put that verse on for Benny the Butcher and them. And shit, we was cool. And, you know, we just talking our shit for real. You know, the next next moves and all that. Because, you know, I got a record with DMX I never dropped that I'm about to drop soon and shit. But wow. we was playing for the video and all that shit. But... That shit, I ain't gonna front, never told nobody this, but when Dog died, I'm like, man, fuck music, for real. Like, wow. You know, get back to the streets and all that, because that was one rap nigga that was no rap nigga. You know what I mean? He was really, t- like, the way I, the, the, the shit I come from, principles and morals, a lot of these rap niggas don't come from that, though, especially niggas in his situation. So, being a brother with him and really talking, understood, like, yeah, hell yeah, I could do this shit being solid, staying true to myself, mm-hmm. you feel me? Talking that shit for real, I told yeah. you. 
And he was one of them niggas. <laughs> Man, so um, just New York, the whole vibe of the music. When you go back home, you, you, I mean, you, you frequent in both places. So, um, what, what's going on in New York now? Is, I mean, my wife seemed to think that the uh, pizza in Chicago, when we go to Chicago, is better I than New York Chicago. pizza. Hell no! I'm I just like telling you, I'm with you, I'm man. Dish. I'm with you, I'm a deep dish girl. I, um, this New York look, pizza. Look here, man. Like, look here, man. I'm with you, man. This thin, skinny, skinny. Look here, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you, yeah, you man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When we nah, come up there, she's yeah. like, well, was Chicago bad? I'm like, nah, nah I'm in like New York. If I see in Chicago, she just say in New York, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Patsy's Pizzeria, man, on 118th and 1st We can get it popping whenever you want to do the contest. Tell her, we'll be there, right? No problem. I'll show you around. Yeah, no, so. I love my Gianna. You don't even know your spot. Giordano's. I know what she's trying to say. Hell, we went over there. It ain't all that. It's all right. You know what I'm saying? The piece of that thick, that's a cake. I love it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no damn piece of thing. That's a hot pocket. And it is. So, what about, so French Montana, what, what's your nationality? Because I keep thinking about French as I'm talking to you. He said yeah. all of the, about I'm Italian, Jamaican, and Puerto Rican. Ah, oh, see, man, you, that's too many. Yeah. He got to add the Jamaican in there. Yeah, Here my we go. Jamaican, Jamaican. And my mom's is Puerto Rican and Italian, for real. So, so that's I, the hustler part. <laughs> What the hell? What's going on here? So I say, say chicken, man. I say. <laughs> that black part up there, that's the original part. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Man. Man. <laughs> so, so when you, um, the, the, the thing I want to ask you is like, in New York, when you up there and, and you, you feel the vibe of the music, how do you feel it, it is uh, now comparable to the way it was five, six years ago? Uh, or do you feel like it's moving? Because in one while, y'all couldn't get number women off the block. Young M.A. and uh, mm-hmm. Nicki, Nicki Minaj. Let's be real. And Cardi B. Uh, that be that platform, though. But you got a lot of underground dudes that's dope. That go mean? hard. Yeah, hell yeah. Like I used it. to watch Joey Badass. He, he acting now. I used to. I was, I was on the come up before I got on the run. I mean, that case I caught him on the run. Joey Badass, French and all them. Like, shout out to both of them and shit. Because I used to perform at SOBs all the time with Joey. Then French Montana. And shit, all his young boys and all that. Like, we be in the spot and all that. I know all his young boys and shit. Those are the homeboys for real. But I, I, I seen a lot of niggas come up and it's different sounds and there's a lot of dope different sounds. But a lot of dudes from where I come from don't get that recognition. That's really dope. You understand? And I got a lot of talent in New York for What's real. What's your hardest record, man? My hardest record? I love all my records, but I got some What's shit. What's the hardest? Like, he gonna say the last one like everybody else, mm-hmm. huh? You could, you could t- it depend on what type of vibe you want. You understand? I like that. I like that. I like that. Okay, like the want. vibe that you're in right now. What's the hardest record? I'm a Libra, so I'm a scale. All my shit is hard, but you could throw on whatever. You could throw on lifestyle if you want a vibe out to that shit. Some New York vibe, or if you want to turn up, you can go to Waki. You want to get a Cali vibe, you go to Got That. <laughs> all type of shit. Yeah, okay. I got a lot of shit with my young boys and shit. They be on their drill shit. So you know, just be adapting. But oh, you in lifestyles? Yeah. You all up in? You ain't? Where the hell? You, that ain't New York, is it? No, I'm in Cali and New York. Cali and New York. Yeah. Oh, you did both scenes. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, you hell on wheels. What's Man, the most creative ain't putting that video you ever like done? They even do that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They ain't going. They no. They in one spot. Mm-hmm. They do that video. They used to do that. I always liked that Welcome to Atlanta, right? Mm-hmm. Where, 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 was it Welcome to Atlanta? And then you have Snoop in Cali. You have somebody in New yeah. York. That'll be dope to redo that. Yeah, you know, yeah. this time, man. That's hard. <laughs> like, that's it, a good idea. That's, that's every, that, that's, yeah. You link with people that could do it too because mm-hmm. y'all all linked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Out of all the videos that you ever done, what's the most creative you think? Mm-hmm. I got some shit that you can see where I come from for real, like showing my grandmother and shit. Oh yeah, what's yeah, up? Yeah, um, is it is a remake the uh, Mary J. Blige beat? Is it's called Ready or Not? Which beat? That oh, they ready. One shot there was Ready or Not. Yeah, Ready or Not. Do you make your own beats? Nah. Oh, he got he ain't no producer. Is that something, is something you don't want to? Um, I would love off to learn into? that, but you know you gotta put a hundred in your shit to focus. But I would love to make my own beats and learn how to record myself. Because mm-hmm. a lot of niggas I be around, as though they do that shit. Yeah, because when I see all, when we've been interviewing so many artists recently, and um, I consider now, if you're being a brand, I don't call you really an artist, I call you a brand. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a brand, you got to know the business side, 
You got to know how to do the producing. You may not even want to do it, but you got to know how to do it. That's a fact. You have to know how to do the engineer and everything like that. So when you do hire somebody to come in, if they're messing up or they're doing something that you don't like them to do. You know, you direct know. them and shit. Exactly. I think that's a New York thing. I love creating. Like, I'm hands-on with my visuals and shit. But, like, learning how to record and all I be doing so much in New York. Be so busy, busy. But I see a lot of out-of-town artists that, like, come from states like this and states in the countryside. They be in the crib. Learning that shit You understand New York We just wake up And want to go outside And just find shit to do mm -hmm. Out here you be in the middle Of nowhere You feel me And it's like You gotta learn that shit like, Yeah I got a homie Out there named uh, Shout out Junebug Man over there at Clout man mm -hmm. Clothing store man In Rhode Island I believe he in He had me He had me laughing He talked about He was, had a, It was a thing called High volume. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we do clothes. We we sell clothes. HVLM. I got some shit for you next time. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. We and and um, man, uh, good clothing brands out so, there, man. I'm telling you, man. When I went out there, I didn't finish the story earlier, but them niggas made me hustle hard as hell, man. <laughs> no, nah, because I was like, man, I, I, I thought, yeah, I got the stores, so I mean, them niggas ain't doing it. These niggas didn't need no store. These mm -hmm. niggas was dressing on niggas street. on the streets, whatever. They didn't even have to have, I'm coming to pick this pack, to take this. They treated like drugs, nigga, almost. Just the shit. clothes, the way they pushing it, man. If they don't it have it and think somebody totally else different. have it, they going to say, come on, we going to go block get it. Yeah, we going to get it. Yeah, they going to get you what you're looking for. Shit. Because you know what? They going to get a cut of that. They going to keep that money in this motherfucking circle. That's funny, man. That's dope, though. Because about numbers. Yes, it's always about the numbers, man. The numbers got to be, hey, the numbers, you gotta watch the numbers, man. <laughs> Control so, of numbers. So, what's your top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Any, Any genre. genre. Number one, DMX? Yeah, DMX. By far, I knew that. I, Some real shit. <laughs> number two. Word. That should be hard. Like, where I come up, I came up listening like Bone Thugs and Harmony. Bone DMX, Thugs and Harmony. Is, is that our first one? That's our first one. We never had one. And then, yeah, then Tupac. Yeah, hell so yeah. that's it. That's why the artists I fuck with, but top three, yeah. Yeah, DMX, Bone Thugs, you know what I mean? and Tupac. That's good. That, that's a good selection, yeah. man. Some Real talk. That's yeah. that's I like it. I like mm -hmm. it. So if you go back and tell, talk to your younger you, man, before all the all the all the crazy stuff, he may. I would say if it was me, it'd be for the life sentence. But he's you know? always be had, life he was always in the crazy. Yeah, stuff Yeah, no, no. It was a time when he was clean. Now that was just. Uh, he never no, was clean nigga, no. since he was eight. Nigga, you like that baby. You seen the baby they got with the fake tattoos standing mm -hmm. on the on, on, on Instagram? I mean, I don't get a twist. <laughs> I, I went to Catholic school, but straight from Catholic uh, school, <laughs> I was going straight to the, the trap. Like, my grandfather had a pizza shop since the 70s in my hood. He ran numbers in the back. He had a bar in the pizza shop. My mom's had a arcade right around the corner from my grandpa's pizza shop since 89. You know what I mean? She was doing her thing out there for real or some whole other shit. She had the yole and the bud, the chocolate back in the days yeah, yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah. But I was always involved in some shit, but not, thinking it was right, though. Mm -hmm. It took out all the like, well, I oh, can't even go back. I can't off. even go back on it. <laughs> yeah. shit crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's all the way back. The yeah. nigga was born in it. It was for real, you. though, on some whole other shit. Yeah. yeah, so you got kids? Yeah, I got three kids, two boys and a girl. So how are you? That's what I'm trying to find so out right what are there. You, doing? you see how you just cut me off because you're going to take my <laughs> question. She know what I'm going to ask. And she just takes it. Go on, take it. What are you doing to prevent them from going down the same path that you went down? I exactly. keep it on it, but I don't really bring my children around that shit. Like, I don't even bring my children. I bring them to the neighborhood Like when we throw parties and shit. But having my children in the hood, just cooling in the park, hell no. Where do they live? They live in, two, two live in Harlem and one in live in, um, in, in Florida. Okay, because mm -hmm. I had friends who um, migrated to New York, and when their kids became teenagers, like, uh-uh, they took them out of New York because there was too much influence in a negative way once you're in New York, period. But you got to just keep it 100 mm -hmm. with your children, have these type of conversations and show them the reality of it, that's all, and just have an understanding with them so they can understand that you ain't old and washed up that you can relate to them still you understand that's all I speak to my younger brothers like that because I don't want to see like a father figure like still your brother but you just got to be tapped in with them and just feel as one with them not like like, like a parent like you're trying to scold them and all like because we all fuck up but learn from other motherfuckers mistakes so you won't fuck up too much let me ask you this but, uh, when you look at uh, I just with Dolph just passed you know getting, mm -hmm. getting, getting killed 
uh, you see the Mo Threes, uh, you see the what was the guy name in New York that not Pop Smoke, it was the one before him that was hanging with French Montana. What was his name? Um, Change Drugs. Yeah, when you see all of these different artists, and and it seemed like it's it seemed like it's it's a cloud, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. that hovers over our our rappers. When you see the way that they're being, the, the destruction is wiping through them. Mm -hmm. What what do you think, and, and how do you move to make sure that you don't become a victim of circumstances? I just stay militant and just I just be cautious in how I'm moving. I really moved out of New York to lead by example and show dudes. It's like you know when I go to New York, you're always gonna be influenced from where you come from. Period. You understand? Just because your genuine heart, but you understand and mature. Like that ain't it. You, like you say a little a little earlier. You be in the hood or where you from and woo woo, you feel you, that ego and shit, but when you go to the real world, that shit is gone because reality, Easy. none of that shit matters in the real world or <laughs> some right. real shit. It's cool to get that principles and morals from that cloth and all that, but the streets is over with or some, yeah. or some whole other shit. Wow. So you just gotta just learn the business of it, like you said earlier, and just influence the youth with that shit because they the future and just make sure they doing shit right. Cause you know we had to learn this shit ourselves and shit for real. And motherfuckers take that person and never want to teach them whoa, whoa, whoa. the next motherfucker. Right. Mm -hmm. But like like I said, just do shit right. Just learn you this shit. It? Yeah. And keep shit on the swivel. Like never get too comfortable. Mm -hmm. I saw that when you in a position of power or a certain position or anything, you ain't supposed to be doing certain shit or moving a certain type of way. I agree. It. I agree a hundred percent. And that's forever. Cause this yeah. shit don't stop. Yeah, like you okay. said you lead the streets alone that shit forever whether you left it or not you know this shit come with you know it come with it you can't mm -hmm. really get around it either signed up for this shit but you know like I said it just and, and I know I know and I didn't even name I didn't name some of the other cats it's, it's little cats everywhere just dying in the, mm -hmm. in the rap game and a lot of them young too bro we even had one that came on our show mm -hmm. that, that got killed Boy, by the guy that was with him just within the last three months. Like, it, like after he left the show, the guy that was with him ended up killing him. That's how that shit go, bro. And I'm like, what the heck? So, as you see the young rappers, and like I say, the ones that are coming, around, we end up going to that funeral. It's like, damn, you know, like, why is this cloud hovering over these artists like that? You know what I mean? It's just crazy, bro. The music be the influence too, man. And social media, none of these cats be out. They think that shit is cool. There's all type of reasons, man. But just stay true to yourself, man. Just stay, keep some sucker free niggas around you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real shit. I, I like that. I have one last question. How important is it to have to have like um, mental cl to clear your mental space every now and again, especially in the music industry, because so many people whether go through depression because maybe they'll come out with a hit right now and you know when you come out with a hit you, you got to try to back it up and come out with another hit and that can be a lot of pressure and then all of a sudden you know people that you know messing with you no more they on somebody else and that's a lot of lot to deal with mm -hmm. you know what i mean or even a person who's never had a hit but been in the business so ma so many years and be like man you know what i mean see that's one thing i learned about my from my pops you know, like he he smokes the chalice. The is a Jamaican bong, mm -hmm. and like they don't smoke just a smoke. Like he always prayed before he smoke, and I always used to laugh when I was a little nigga. But then I learned it. He, he told me some shit. But smoking and meditation, like that's that works for me. Like I meditate at the end of every day. Like I think of how I give a nigga five. They five. They body length. What type of at least they get deep. But meditation and. It, and the peace of mind is key in life. You understand? Sometimes to take a vacation, but you need that shit. If not, you lose your fucking mind out here. You I agree. Real I, shit. I agree. A hundred, a million percent. Mm -hmm. You yeah. gotta have it. You gotta have that that downtime you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I mean, even the police have to have it. I talked to my partner, a detective, and out in the country, and it's like, dang, it, you know, you 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 be around. You know, they seeing something every day. That's why they be shooting niggas on accident or killing niggas and it supposed to be a traffic stop. You can't mm -hmm. keep seeing this negative stuff every day and day and then think you can just deal with regular people. That's a no-brainer. You know damn well. Yeah, because we tired, Am I right? of, yeah, shit. Cause we tired of seeing it's it on the not. news every day. Imagine they're seeing it in person. In real time. I watch that shit. I don't watch the news. I don't either. I can't do it, man. We had to let that go. I told her I can't do it no more. Too much negativity. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, man, hey, man, one thing about it, man, we got to say it, man. We love you, bro. 
Yeah, one like shot show, deal. Yeah, man, hey, man, how can people get a hold of you? Yeah, one shot deals, D E A L Z, on any social media platform, YouTube, Instagram. Everything one shot deals. One shot deals, man. Appreciate you yeah. coming on the show, man. Like I said, and you know we in the Dallas area, so if it's in it, ever anything, you I'm ever sell up on my show, you gonna see me soon. I'm gonna have a care <laughs> package for y'all. Say, man, you Word pull up, up, man. It's going down. Real talk, man. Yeah, shout out for sure, show, man. man. For sure, yeah. man. Thank Most you ready. so much, man. Yeah. Hey, man. One shot deals in the building, man. Hey, Ride man. Nation. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One. And we out.